We want to hear of a life that was changed because Jesus suffered, bled, and died on his behalf. And uh, so Colby Martin is here uh, to enter the waters of baptism this morning, and he wants to share uh, his story of how the Lord has worked in his life. You can have a seat. Go ahead, Colby. Kindergarten was the beginning of my walk with the Lord. A teacher at my school at Calvary Independent Baptist Church taught us about the Lord in, in the lessons. They got us to memorize the Lord's Prayer in John 3.16. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. John 3.16. This was the beginning of my faith. And in second grade, I remember asking a friend to pray for me that I would be saved by the Lord. I did not pray at that time, but realized at that time I walked with the Lord. I wanted to walk with the Lord. When I was 11, my brother Philip passed away. This was of with the, yeah. this was a sp- time of spiritual awakening for me and remind me that I'm not in control and that the Lord has a special plan for me. After that, my walk with the Lord slowed down, stalled out a few times, but I kept wanting to follow him. Lately, I've been thinking that I need to be more serious about my relationship with the Lord, Jesus. And I had a conversation with Pastor Ben that helped me push me in that direction. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sins, and he rose again. He was the only one that could die for my sins because we can't do anything about our sins. Our sins deserve death, and Jesus died with our sins in our place. His death left the old me behind, and his resurrection gave me a whole new life. Without Jesus, I was very focused on the Lord. I wasn't very focused on the Lord. I was more focused on the world with Jesus. I cannot be more focused on him. I can be more focused on him, and less on worldly possessions and desires. I want him to be my focus in life. I believe the church shows me the right way and helps me grow. It's a body of believers. I want to be a member of the body and help out as much as I can. I want to leave my old self behind and live new life in Jesus. We just want to remember, uh, as David talked about, a a wedding, right? Uh, Baptism is is similar to a wedding ring in the sense that uh, the wedding ring doesn't make you married, right? Uh, The wedding ring is a symbol of what is happening, right? It's, it's an external symbol of an internal reality. And in the same way, uh, Colby, in trusting the Lord for his salvation, in his declaration that he cannot save himself, but only the Lord can save him because his sins deserve death, uh, Colby is entering the waters of baptism to portray that, to say that out loud in front of the whole church, to walk with the church in that way. And in so doing, he is identifying himself with, first of all, with the Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And then he's identifying himself with the Lord's people, the church, saying that he's committing to not not just enter the waters of baptism, but to a whole life of discipleship with God's people. And so what is symbolized here is Colby goes under the water is that he has died with Christ. He is buried with him, and therefore he is raised to resurrection life with him, both now and then in eternal life. And it's not the baptism that changes that. It's his faith in the Lord Jesus Christ that changes that. And so this is a declaration of faith this morning. And we get to witness it, church. We get to witness it and remember our own salvation in Christ. And so Colby, oh, no, Ben's back. There you go. Um, in entering the waters of baptism, are you saying that you believe that Jesus Christ is your only Savior and Lord and that his death provided the salvation for you? Yes. And are you saying that you are committing to a life of discipleship with the help of the local church? And it is my pleasure and joy to baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.